Welcome back to Newfoundland for part five of Team Wild's Carnivore Moose Meat Special. Previously on Team Wild's Carnivore, we harvested a young bull moose with a pretty awesome long range shot. If you haven't seen the video, click on the link. Then Ironbound Outfitters master moose guide Donny Benoit showed us how to field dress the carcass, remove and debone the haunch, and then remove and debone the shoulder. If you haven't seen those videos, click on the links. So with both the haunch and shoulder removed and deboned, next we move on to the back straps and the often overlooked rib and neck meat, which many hunters leave behind. These areas can be very fiddly to debone, which is why they're often left on the carcass, but they're some of the tastiest meat on the animal. Luckily for us, Ironbound Outfitters Master Moose Guide Donny Benoit knows exactly what to do, and he's going to give us the inside track on how to save as much meat as possible. Okay, now we're going to start going after the back strap and the neck. So what I'm going to start doing here, is I'm going to try and get down a little further, see how far I got here. As you can see, it's quite a back strap. Now, finding where it starts. I'll usually need this bit of meat on it. That's some good heating right there. And just follow along. You can actually sit, if you're looking at it, you can actually sit. Just go in deep here to your ribs. And it should come right along there. Like so. You don't want to be wasting this piece of meat. Like you see, I can almost pull it away from the bone. It's so tender looking. Now, you can feel the rib in there. So it comes down low. Again, it's your pelvic joint. This your, uses this for a marker. Moving through. Keep it close to your ribs. And you'll see you. You're gonna hit that blade. Keep trim it along. When you hit that piece of yellow sinew, you know you've gone halfway. So that rides right down through its back, the very tip. And that should be it. There's your back strap. Get some fine heat and meat right here. Can't get much better than that. I'll just lay it out here. It's nice. Anytime you see some hot hairs, just pick them off. We're gonna go back and get a piece of the meat, uh, the neck, and then we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you a debone rib. Not too many people know how to do that. Well, first I'll start back on the hen. This little flap can come off. It's a little dirty. Up here, anything you don't need, we'll trim it off. Like so, it's nice and clean. Okay, we won't need that. Oh, what do we have here? Looks like we have a little surprise for our friend here. here. Well, we look at that. Little souvenir for you, Ian. There you go, so that's a Hornady 180 grain interlock, mm -hmm. fired at 417 yards, didn't pass straight through, still mushroom nicely, looks like it retained a lot of its weight, although we'll just have to weigh it when we get back. But more importantly, this proves that all three shots hit that animal. It did, yeah. There's a few doubters in our midst here and there, <laughs> but this is the final piece of the puzzle for a second. I'm starting to think I might need lessons. 417 yards? What sort of miss moron misses at 417 yards? Exactly. Anyway, you've got work to do, kid. Right. All right, now, first one you start the ribs. Like you say, trim up anything we don't need. And there's a little bruise our friend left behind here. A little tricky starting off, but you'll get the hang of it pretty fast. Just follow each side of your rib. All right, now you can just continue on. Just follow the rib right down to where the back strap's been cut off. Again, 
just pull it tight and just cut it close to your rib, like so. And again, just keep following this process right up through. It's only a lot of guys will leave this rib meat, but yeah. it makes a great burgers and sausage, right? Oh yeah, this is tender meat. A lot of the older folks, this is this is the best part of the animal. Anything close to the bone is supposed to be the best. The best eating. So just for a few minutes work. Oh yeah. You can potentially get off another seven I or eight pounds of meat. I say more than that. Probably looking more like close to twenty the time you're done. Now, a lot of cases too, like if you're too far back in the woods, I mean. And you can't really bring all your bones back, so this will be an ideal way of getting your meat off your ribs. Just keep going on up. Looks like somebody shot it there, don't they? I think there's a hit there. Fall up on your breasts. Broken rib. Gotcha there. And here we have your rib meat. And there's very little left there as you can see. I'm looking at a good 12, 13 pounds of meat right here. Now the neck, there's not a hell of a lot of meat on the neck, but it's worth saving. You're gonna run into quite a bit of bone here. Just be patient, get way through it. So as you can see, once the animal's laying on this side, it's best to do the entire side of that animal before you start the other side because you don't want to be moving around too much. These animals get pretty big. It takes a lot of energy moving them around all the time. So, completely do one side and do the other. There's half of the rib, there, Nick. And there we go. You're looking at another 10 pounds. Eight to 10 pounds of meat right there. Practice makes perfect. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. It's repetitious work. Uh, over the years, I've been at this a long time and I learn something almost every time I do it. So I take my time. I'm learning as I'm going and I always try to keep it as clean as possible in the field. It just saves you a whole pile of work when you get it out. So have patience. It'll come to you. Only the kit left on this side will have their tenderloin. Some folks would say it's the best piece. So here we are. Here it is. Again, I'm using my pelvic bone as a guideline. I use that pelvic bone at least three times as a guideline. I just came in close. There we are. That's a nice tenderloin good quality meat. So there we have it, half a bull moose, boned out, nice and cleanly done, ready for packing out and taking down the mountain. And I think the guys back home will find this really useful when it comes to harvesting their big game animals. So well, great, so did you learn anything? Yeah, I think if you learned a few things, you know, you Donny, I'm always yeah. learning something. Well, great, you can do the other app. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. One side of the carcass is completely stripped of meat and ready to pack out. Next time on Team Wild's Carnivore, we visit a commercial butcher to see exactly what happens to the moose meat once it's been retrieved and brought back to civilization. To see how the experts transform this into this. To book your moose hunting adventure of a lifetime with Ironbound Outfitters, visit newfoundlandmoose.com.
and subscribe to Team Wild TV to stay up to date with our brand new and exciting lineup of shows for 2013.